you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, dream team? Coach D here coming at you with another growth mini-sode. This will be a bite-sized episode with the goal of setting a growth-minded intention and focus for the upcoming week. Each Minnesota is going to offer a quote that encapsulates the theme of the week. And after the quote, we're going to dive into a weekly focus, something small that we can concentrate on for the following seven days. As well as we're going to touch on a physical activity and a nutritional tip that will better assist us in working towards a more healthy and optimal way of living our own dream life. And each Minnesota is going to end with the recommendation for the week. The recommendation could be anything from a podcast, a book, an article, a paper, anything that I think is going to help better educate ourselves toward the overall focus of the week. And if this is your first time listening to a Minnesota, the goal is to listen on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday to be ready to start the challenges of the week on Monday. So listen to just one Minnesota every week. And as that week finishes, move on to the next week's Minnesota. I mean, you can start all the way over at Minnesota number one, or you can join us with the team right now. These Minnesotes will only be as beneficial to you as you're willing to make them. So if you're playing along with the weekly focuses or the physical activity and nutrition tips, it'll help you be much more successful to do this with someone in your life. So grab an accountability buddy and share on your social media platforms the challenges of the week. You never know who is going to be quietly watching and rooting for you. And you never know whose life you will truly inspire just by sharing your journey, both the challenges and the successes. You're going to be far more likely with a support system and a social network to be successful. Get someone that's chasing similar fitness goals as you and do this with them. And as you work on making your life healthier and you motivate your network through your positive actions and your lifestyle choices, the ripple effect, it's unimaginable with who will be touched by you motivating and posting, and including others in your journey. So let's dive into this week's growth mini-sode. This week's quote actually comes from a conversation that I had with one of my clients last week. And I feel like a lot of us could benefit from the conversation that we had. We were discussing how to start the new year that's coming up. And she was asking me, what is the quote-unquote best way to do this? Or what is the fastest way to do this? What was the most effective strategy to getting towards her goal? What I told her was, the question should not be whether a certain fitness routine or diet is the best or the fastest. The question should be, what lifestyle change can you maintain that allows you to have the life that you want to live? The question shouldn't be, whether a fitness routine or a diet is the best or the fastest. The question should be, what lifestyle change can you maintain that allows you to have the life that you want to live? What if I told you that you could have every health goal that you've ever dreamed of, and all you have to do is wake up at 4 a.m. every single morning, go outside, and do a cold plunge in an ice bath for three straight minutes. And if you did that every day, every single day for six months that you'd achieve your goals. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, that's not happening. First off, I'm not waking up at 4 a.m. And second off, that early in that amount of cold, no thank you. I don't care how badly I want any of those health goals. That's not something that I would enjoy. That's not something that I would look forward to. And that's definitely something I'm not going to adhere to long term. I'm sorry, Mr. Wim Hof, but that's just not the life that I'm going to live. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter how effective the fitness routine is or the diet is. If it's not something that you can consistently adhere to, and the only way that you're going to find long-term consistency, which is exactly where success is achieved, long-term consistency, the only way you're going to find that is if you're able to create a lifestyle behavior change by either stacking that behavior of whatever it is towards your goal with something that you already do habitually and or that you genuinely look forward to doing whatever behavior change aligns with your goals that you can habitually or genuinely look forward to. That is what you're looking for. So we have to be honest with ourselves. What is something that you enjoy doing that gets your body moving, that gets you breathing hard and that works up a sweat? 
That is the physical activity that you need to base your workouts, your training, your exercise around. What is the diet that allows you to control the amount of food that you're eating while obtaining the micronutrients and the minerals and the vitamins that you need to be an optimal performing human? That is the type of diet that you want to center your food intake around. And then during those weird times or the holidays or parties or vacations or whatever the one-offs may be, you have those one-off days where you can consume for other reasons, but then you get right back on your normal eating routine as if nothing happened. For me and my daily movement, my training, I pick three things that I absolutely love and that I absolutely look forward to that I go out of my way and I schedule into my day as if it was a meeting or an appointment in order to get my movement in. For me, I love walking the beach at sunset. And yes, that's physical activity, simply walking. And on the days that I don't work for the afternoons, I'll go to Torrey Pines, I'll put my headphones in, and I'll take a super leisurely stroll that adds about 5,000 to 10,000 steps to my daily total. And I don't care if I'm tired. I don't care if it's cold outside. I don't care if it's raining or if if my friends want to go out. I would rather do that walk than almost anything in the world. And now that's a powerful thing that I could maintain for the rest of my life. And then if I work during sunset, maybe I'm coaching at that time, I'll actually go outside and I have a basketball court right outside my apartment complex. I literally walk right to the basketball court and I practice the skill of shooting. No, I am not doing it as a workout. I'm doing it to get some sun on my skin while I move my body very easily and I practice a skill that I truly enjoy. I could do that for the every day for the rest of my life and that would make me very, very happy. And then the third thing that I do that's one of my favorite moving meditations that really puts me in connection with how I move my own body and that's resistance training. I love to go into the gym and lift. I know this is not for everyone, but when I go into the gym and I put those headphones on, I can tune out everything in the world. And my mind, for some reason, it never wanders. It stays right there in the moment. And I can and I can practice connecting to every single squeeze of every rep. And I can practice skills of moving my body and and its muscles along with my breath. There's no other time that I feel more inside of my own body than I do when I'm resistance training by myself, nice and slow. It's my recharge moment, and it makes me happy. Now, for you, I don't care if you hate lifting or shooting a basketball or sunsets. Well, if you hate sunsets, then I'm not sure that we can be friends. But hey, we all have our preferences. But I don't care if you don't love any of that. There's something in this world that gets you to move that you can look forward to. What is it? What do you love doing that moves your body? If you're sitting there saying that there's nothing that you can think of, I promise you, it's there. You just haven't found it yet. The question should not be whether a certain fitness routine or diet is the best or fastest. The question should be what lifestyle change can you maintain that allows you to live the life that you want to live, your deeper why. If you're looking for health and performance goals, and I'm not talking about performances in like a professional athlete. I'm talking about everyday performance. I want to be able to climb the stairs without getting out of breath. I want to be strong enough to lift that box in the garage by myself without asking for help. I want to be able to carry groceries up a few flight of stairs if my elevator's broken. So if you're looking for health and performance, all of those things are performance-based or even strength goals. Your goal is to train and focus on the physical activity selections that you can do every day that will get you there. Now, if your goal is body recomposition, meaning weight loss, muscle gain, um, getting yourself to be a smaller or larger human being, then you have to do the same exact thing with your diet that consists of foods that you can eat consistently day in and day out that are easy enough for you to prepare and store and then recreate week after week. What food choices can you maintain forever that allows you to live the life that you want to live? It doesn't matter if the studies say that keto is the way to lose weight the best. If you can't maintain the keto diet forever, it's not the best way for you. Maybe you will lose the weight and maybe you lose it fast. But that weight will come right back on as soon as you fall off the strict 
eating strategy. Even if I told you that turning into a vegan or turning into a carnivore is the answer to all of our world's problems, it won't work for you if that's not something that you're not only able to do, but actually look forward to doing. And look, there's going to be times when you have to do stuff that you don't want to do. I'm sure there's a lot of us that don't want to go to work every single day or want to brush our teeth every single day or clean our house every single week. But we do it because we have attached its importance to a bigger and a deeper why. This allows us to have a lifestyle change and a lifestyle behavior that we include as a necessity to accomplishing that meaningful goal that we have. And that is exactly how you want to pick your activities for movement and exercise. And that's exactly how you want to build a diet that you can sustain for the long haul. So this week's weekly focus, in order for us to get to a place where we can do everything that I just talked about, in order for us to figure out what we can maintain that allows us to live the lives that we want to live, we're going to be the CEO of our own health. Your best doctor is your body. Not only that, but your ability to learn how to listen to your own body and what it's trying to tell you. Every single person is individualized on how each variable responds towards your health, fitness, and wellness. For me, I could drink a gallon of milk in two days and feel absolutely in peak health. Whereas I know a lot of people in my life, if they even have a little half of a glass of milk, it turns into an epic event of destruction and mayhem that I wouldn't even wish on my worst enemy. You can see how it doesn't matter if milk is a superfood, if that type of person drinks that and it doesn't agree with their body, that person should not be including milk into their lifestyle. So it's our job to create an awareness of what works for us specifically, what we enjoy personally, and what we look forward to and what we can maintain for long-term consistency. So what I have is a notes section on my phone. One of that uh, folders says movement preferences. And the other folder says nutrition preferences. Anytime I do or eat something that I love, I write it down in that notes folder. And over time, I've accumulated a really solid list. When I do something like paddle boarding and I have the time of my life, I put it in that notes section, movement preferences. And then besides paddleboarding, I write down what it takes to do it. And if I can maintain that for the rest of my life. Now, I enjoy paddleboarding as much as I enjoy shooting basketball. But paddleboarding requires a whole lot more to experience it. I have to load up the paddleboard in a bag. I have an inflatable one. I have to take it out, inflate it. I have to find a parking spot close to the ocean or the bay. I have to clean it after I use it. I have to wear the right clothing. It kind of has to be a nice day. All of these factors, well, whereas for basketball, all I have to literally do is walk outside with a ball and start shooting. That's it. Very low barriers to perform, very low time commitment. And I have a basketball court right next to my house. It's perfect for me. So this list in the notes section is it's just me collecting my thoughts to figure out what works best for my current lifestyle. Now, if, who knows? Maybe one day I'm going to be filthy rich and own a mansion on the cliffs of Del Mar. And I could just walk right out my back door, down my personal staircase, onto the beach and just cruise with my paddleboard. Well, then that would be great. I can shift instead of playing basketball to paddleboarding. But once I have made my list, I don't even think about it anymore. It's just part of my daily routine. Right before I go to coach my afternoon blocks, I know that I'm going to get my movement in. I have a whole block blocked out for movement. So I go outside and I shoot basketball around and, and that's what I look forward to. That's what I enjoy and that's what gets my movement in that day. It's the same thing for diet, my diet preferences. When I eat foods, I record how they make me feel. Do they make me feel bloated, satiated, meaning full, happy, lethargic, healthy, do they give me a headache? Do they make me feel guilty? All of these things are super important to be aware of. I notate if it's really easy for me to overeat them. I notate if it makes me want to stack mo snack more after I eat them. I notate if I can't stop eating them con uncontrollably. Like dried mangoes and salted cashews from Costco. These things are my kryptonite, man. I love dried mangoes and salted cashews. I could eat them uncontrollably all day long. And then I make this ever-evolving list. Once I get an idea of what foods fit my lifestyle, fit my goals, 
and fit my overall life that I want to live, then those are the staples that I always have in my kitchen. And I slowly phase out the things that don't match. I love Doritos chips. I used to eat them all the time as a kid. Uh, I'd have a bowl of, <laughs> oh, this is kind of embarrassing to say, I have a bowl of Doritos chips and a full glass of milk right before I would go to bed every single night when I was like 10 to 15. It was insane. Uh, I don't know what I was doing, but I phased Doritos out of my life because they just don't match. I could eat a whole bag in one sitting and I still love them to this day, but I don't buy them. They don't go in my house and I don't eat them unless I have like a very special party. Another example is Snickers. For some reason, I have this insane connection with the candies bar Snickers. My dad loved these Snickers bars and he would give them to us as a kid as a huge treat and for like really special events. So that is locked into my brain. I could devour six king size Snicker bars and not even blink an eye. And I know this about myself. So I don't buy Snickers bars. M maybe once in a while, maybe like twice a year. I'll buy it for a special event or a road trip or whatever, whatever the case is. But I know that that food item does nothing for my goals. I'm aware of how I consume it, in what way I consume it, and the results of consuming it. And I weigh the options and I decide that yes, while it would taste amazing and I would really enjoy every single minute of eating it, I truly don't want to eat it. I don't want it because the net results from eating that food is negative towards my goals. So I have a whole list of, of notes in, in of foods that are equal to the Snickers bars and foods that are in, on the exact other end of the spectrum for me. And this week, I challenge you to do the same. Be the CEO of your own health and wellness and start a list of activities that you love and that you could do every single day for the rest of your life. Low barriers to entry, easy for you to implement into your daily routine. Start a list of foods and how they make you feel and if they match your desired life. And start to piece together your lifestyle behaviors that allow you to have the life that you want to live. Make sure you schedule in your physical activity. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to say at 10 a.m. I'm going to shoot basketball, but at 10 a.m. I'm going to get my movement in. And then as you create this list, you can insert those activities that make the most sense for that day. Same thing with your food items. You'll have a set breakfast, a set lunch, a set dinner. Uh, I don't eat breakfast. I actually skip breakfast and I go straight to lunch and then I eat a dinner and then I eat a late night snack. And that's just worked for me. Three meals a day, kind of different than the normal person. But I have for lunch, maybe 20 foods that I eat for lunch. And I have those foods in my kitchen and, and I just slide them in. So you can do the exact same thing. These are your set foods. And these are the ones that fit your lifestyle and fit your goals. Make your list and start implementing them as soon as you can. This week's physical activity tip is to incorporate more hills into your training. Hills, hill work. It's one of my favorite, favorite things to do. And in my opinion, it's one of the most overlooked and neglected forms of training that there are out there. Incorporating hills requires a larger power output than just and doing the same activity on flat ground. But also, it helps mitigate some of the negative forces and impact that we encounter when doing things like flat ground sprinting or jumping or carrying or rucking. And So don't get me wrong, hills suck. They suck when you're doing them. They are both mentally and physically demanding, which is also why I argue that they're kind of beneficial. So let's start with the activity sprinting. We lose the ability to sprint as we get older, not because of our age, but because over time we stop performing sprint-like activities. So those fast twitch powerful efforts, our body says, well, we don't need to do that anymore because all that this person does is sit and walk. So let's prioritize the muscle types that do those types of activities and get rid of all the other muscle types because, well, we don't ever use those. This person obviously doesn't care about doing that type of thing, sprinting. And you know what we always say, if you don't use it, you lose it. But let's say that you really do want to perform a powerful effort like a sprint. Maybe, maybe in the case you have to sprint after your kid who's headed into traffic. Or there's a runaway shopping cart that's about to hit an old defenseless grandma. Or maybe there's a zombie apocalypse and you'd like to outrun 
your out of shape, loud mouth coworkers so that they can become a zombie snack instead of you? Well, you never know. It could happen. But if I asked you to go out right now outside and sprint as fast as you could, what would that look like? Well, if you haven't done it in years, maybe decades, we could see where things might go a little array. And if you're embarrassed right now about not sprinting, don't feel bad because this is a normal thing as we become adults. There's no reason to sprint anymore. There's no reason to jump anymore. Usually the hardest part of sprinting is is on flat ground. We tend to overstride which lengthens out our weak and tight hamstrings, which are on the back of your leg, more than we're used to. And almost always, you'll find that people end up pulling hamstrings when they first sprint and they're not ready for it. If you ever want to see an example of this, go to the first game of the season for a City League softball tournament and just watch people going from home to first after they hit the ball. And just check out how many people injure themselves during the less than 100 foot sprint from home base to first base. It's almost a guarantee that you're going to see someone pull a hamstring, which is not funny, but it's just the way it is. You can't go from zero to 100 if you haven't sprinted in the past year or decade or whatever the case may be. But when you run hills, consider this strength training for your running. With hills, you take out all of the negative power of slowing down because you're going uphill. You focus on shorter, more strength-demanding strides, and you ask a greater power output of your muscles in order to navigate the incline. You're taking a lot of the risk out of sprinting because of that shorter stride and because you aren't decelerating um, as much as you would on flat ground. Now, yes, you'll move slower, and it will be much harder, but the overall effect on your training is positive. When it comes to the power output, and in the case of hill sprints, hitting your fast twitch performance muscles. Hills don't have to be reserved for just sprints, though. There's more than that. You can put weights in a backpack, and you can climb uphill. The activity name for this is called rucking, R-U-C-K-I-N-G, rucking. You can get incredible results for fat loss, strength gain, cardiovascular endurance, and even mental fortitude by rucking. Honestly, I recommend rucking to 9 out of 10 of my clients going uphill with a backpack instead of going out and running just with their running shoes and their body weight. When they are just starting their fitness journey for their weight loss and health goals, I recommend rucking over running all day long. I've even done workouts with clients where I'll have them fill up a couple of sandbags and they'll carry it up the hill. They'll just walk uphill with the sandbags in their hands. They can do it in many different ways. They can hold the bags over their head. They can hold them on their shoulders. They can hold them at their sides. For an entire workout, just climbing the hill with sandbags. It's amazing. Also, one of the best things that you could do for any type of knee pain is going uphill backwards walking walking backwards uphill. The way that your foot strikes the ground is in a knees over toe fashion, which is one of the best ways to build strength and resilience in your knees. Walk backwards. I promise you, the more that you do it, safely of course, the better results you'll see, especially for knee strength and health. You can even progress and one day work your way to jump workouts up a hill. If you've ever done flat ground bounding, double leg, single leg, zigzag, there's just so many countless ways to jump and bound. But if you've ever done a workout on flat ground, much difference if you can jump uphill. Jumping uphill reduces the impact your joints go under, similar to as if you were jumping up onto a box instead of jumping off a box onto the ground. Jumping uphill requires more power but less impact, which is exactly what we should be looking for when we're doing a jump workout. So start incorporating hills into your weekly routine. It's a game changer. Walk it, ruck it, sprint it if you can start slow, jump it if you can start slow, or even go backwards. Let me know if you try it and how it went. Let me know if you already do it and the things that you love to do so that I can share it. This week's nutrition tip 
I want to give you an overview of a really interesting podcast episode that I listened to from the Doctor's Pharmacy podcast with Dr. Mark Hyman. This one was titled, Eat These Five Superfoods to Enhance Your Brain and Your Body. It's about an hour long and had some really, really good content, and I want to share it. But if you have time to listen to the whole thing, I'll include the link of this episode in the description of the mini-sode. Definitely highly recommend checking it out. So his five superfoods that he talks about, and there aren't only five superfoods. He just picked these five out of dozens because these were the ones that he wanted to talk about. His five superfoods were, number one, cognac root, K-O-N-J-A-C, cognac root. Number two, Himalayan tartar buckwheat. And I've heard a lot of experts talking about this. Himalayan tartar, T-A-R-T-A-R-Y, buckwheat, which is actually a flower. Number three, cruciferous vegetables. Number four, mushrooms. And number five, green matcha tea. Now, along with these five superfoods that he talked about, he included some of his favorite ways to prepare them. For example, he discussed a chai pancake recipe that he had that he uses Himalayan tartar buckwheat. Uh, he said use almond flour and this buckwheat flour along with eggs, and you can have an extremely healthy and tasty pancake mix. And if you're gluten intolerant, you can still have this because it's uh, the buckwheat is a flour and it's not a wheat. He also talked about how he pre prepares his cruciferous vegetables, which is the way that we currently cook them in my household over here. He gave this really good broccoli cooking tip. He said, steam the broccoli just until they're really green. You don't want to oversteam them. Then this homemade sauce that he makes, it's the secret to making them really tasty. Your sauce is going to be olive oil, a little bit of lemon, crushed black pepper, Himalayan pink salt, and crushed garlic. So if you take an olive oil base, uh, squeeze some lemon in there, sprinkle some crushed black pepper, some Himalayan pink salt, and some crushed garlic powder, uh, pour that over your broccoli once you mix it all up. Oh my gosh. Bake those, and it's going to add a crispy texture to them. If you, uh, We actually bake them at our house after we steam them um, because I'm super picky with soft mushy vegetables. Yes, I'm still five years old. I know it. But baking them puts a little crisp to them, which I actually kind of like. And then he talked about how healthy mushrooms um, are like the new craze right now. He gave a really easy shiitake mushroom recipe to help boost your immune system. He cuts the shiitake mushrooms in half, and then he cuts the ends off, and um, he toasts them for 40 minutes. Once he does that, he adds olive oil, salt, pepper, and boom. That's a nice, crunchy, toasty, delicious mushroom concoction right there. One of the more interesting recipes he shared on this episode was his breakfast shake. He also shared a link for his pharmacy shake recipes. Oh my gosh, you guys have to check this out. I'll include the link to that as well in the description of this mini So Look for the pharmacy shake recipes link. Um, the recipes that you'll find at that link are a ton of different smoothies and shakes. Pink Power Beet Smoothie, Picante Mango Smoothie, Cinnamon No Toast Crunch Smoothie, Green Apple Super Smoothie, Maca Iced Coffee Smoothie, Lemon Poppy Smoothie, um, spiced sweet potato smoothie, even a blueberry lavender shake, a coconut cacao low carb smoothie, chocolate nut milkshake, oh, and more. He had a ton of them in there. And with this link, you'll get specific instructions on exactly the ingredient amounts and exactly how to prepare them. And it's all for free. They looked as delicious. I would check them out if I was you. But his personal breakfast shake contents were really interesting to me. I wrote them down and I want to share them with you here. He said that it's important to, to have with your breakfast shake protein, fat, and fiber. So protein, fat, and fiber. He uses goat whey protein, but any type of whey protein will work um, or even dairy if you can tolerate it. Once you get your protein, maybe it's a protein powder, whatever it is, then you add fat. And fat, you can use MCT oil, MCT oil, which is medium chain triglyceride oil. Um, you can buy that uh, on thrivemarket.com. You can buy that at Costco. They have MCT oil everywhere. You could even take a fish oil supplement with that, but add some fat to it and then fiber. I believe that Dr. Mark Hyman, he uses a fiber supplement powder 
Um, but I'm not positive because he didn't really specify. But once you add your protein, fat, and fiber, then he includes polyphenols for antioxidant health. He adds pomegranate and cranberry extract. So pomegranate and cranberry extract. And then he adds mushrooms, which you can get a mushroom powder supplement from the company Four Sigmatic, F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C, Four Sigmatic, all one word, dot com. Um, we use their products all the time at our house. And he adds reishi, lion's mane, chaga, and cordyceps to his mushroom shake. That is a mushroom powerhouse right there. He also puts two products in there for gut health. He puts probiotics and then this supplement called immunoglobulin. So if you want to check out immunoglobulin and do a little research there and see if it fits your goals. And then he puts some blueberries, raspberries, strawberries. He puts some berries in there and some macadamia nut butter. Oh my gosh. Sounds so incredible. Um, I'll include the link to the description of all this stuff in the description of this mini if you really want to go in deeper. But the biggest takeaways from this episode, for me, were summed up in a quote from Dr. Hyman. He said, don't let your ideology trample all over your biology. Don't let your ideology trample all over your biology. Which means just because you heard this person say that whatever food is great because of X, Y, Z, but if it doesn't make you feel good, then it doesn't matter what the studies say or the doctors or the experts say. It may not be a great food for you. Don't let your ideology trample all over your biology. He gave an example of one of his patients, a huge six foot five inch guy, big muscular dude who was like a super exerciser. He exercised a ton. He was told that by a nutrition expert that if he went low protein for a certain period, he would experience longevity benefits and other health benefits. But he felt terrible doing it. And Dr. Hyman was like, well, if you're eating for health, and that way of eating makes you feel like crap, then don't do that. You're probably not doing what you think you're doing. You have to realize that the doctors that you know are super well-intentioned people. They most likely got into that field to help people. But he points out in this episode that his daughter is currently going through medical school, and when he looks at her study material, they're currently learning health from the 1950s old information, old textbooks. It's just how our system works. I heard this fact that it says it takes on average 17 years for, a, for new information that's being discovered right now from studies and other things like that to get into the textbooks and then be distributed to the schools and to the masses. 17 years. So just keep that in mind when you hear your experts or your doctors telling you that kind of stuff. You, you never know what information is coming from where. And then finally, there should be two things, two major principles for you to focus on when you're deciding what to eat. Number one, the first thing is your food quality. How fresh is this food? Is it wild or from a food lot? Was regenerative farming used to create this product or was it factory farmed? Where did the seed from this plant come from? What kind of soil was it grown in? How long has it been stored? Is it organic? Does it have pesticides, herbicides, rodenticides? Stuff like that. Remember that food is information. Food is medicine. That is the mindset that we should have when we're consuming our daily go-to foods. The second thing that you want to have in mind, your, your major principle to focus on when you're deciding what to eat, is personalization. What are you trying to accomplish with your specific goals? And remember that there's no one size fits all approach here. If your beliefs are that something is a superfood or something is really, really good for you, but you don't feel good eating it, then don't do that. Personalize it for yourself. As you go through the grocery store, you're not getting food. You're getting medicine. So look at that food and consider, is this helping my gut or my digestive system? Is this food helping my immune function? Is this helping my brain health or my skeletal or muscular systems? And if you don't know, then this is where we start the long journey of being a lifelong learner and learning what foods do help, where we're deficient, and how we can teach ourselves to bridge the gap between where we are and where we need to be. That's powerful right there. 
Check out the full episode of this Doctor's Pharmacy podcast if you can. I highly recommend it. You'll get way more out of it. And then if any of those recipes sound good, those shake recipes, maybe check out the link for the smoothies and the shakes and see if you can grab some good ideas from what Dr. Mark Hyman is doing. And lastly, this week's recommendation is to get a product that I'm in love with. I'm obsessed with it. And I've used it for years and years. I think it's been like three years so far that I've used it. You've probably heard me talk about it many times on this podcast. And that is the Activity Sleep Recovery Readiness Tracker. It's a tracking aura ring, O-U-R-A ring. They just came out with a new generation three ring and it's incredible. I can't recommend it enough. So this is a wearable device. It's a ring that you put around your finger that tracks your physical activity. It tracks how well you sleep. It shows you the amount of time you spend in each stage of sleep, how much restorative deep sleep or REM sleep or time awake spent tossing and turning. It tracks your heart rate. It tracks how ready you are and gives you a readiness score, which can help even tell you if you're getting sick before you even feel sick. The new generation three ring even gives you live time heart rate data, as well as telling ladies when their period is about to start. It's all on this ring. I only charge it once a week for about an hour, and it's good for the entire week. I don't even feel it when I'm doing heavy lifting like heavy deadlifts or pull-ups. Uh, I have it on all the time. I never take it off. I shower with it. I sleep with it. It, it. It's on forever. I just take it off one hour a week to charge. It's waterproof. So if you like to swim or take baths or whatever, you, you don't have to take it off. For me, I've used all the things. I've used Fitbits, Garmin's, Whoop straps. Um, but I've always hated having a band on my wrist, especially when I'm sleeping or I'm showering or I'm in the water. This ring is next level. It's super low profile, super cool. Plus their customer service is next level. I had one, the first one I got, the battery started to go down a little bit. Like it only lasted maybe two days instead of a week. After about a year and a half, I emailed them. They sent me a brand new ring for free. It's a great company, great product. And I have a discount link that you can use to get you $50 off your purchase and six months for free of their monthly membership. So check out the link in the description of this mini-sode. And if you've been waiting to get an activity tracker, remember we always talk about awareness and tracking is key. This is the one that you want right here, the Aura Ring. I have no affiliation with them. They do give me a discount code for um, when I bought my ring. I, that I can share it with a few friends. So just message me if, if it doesn't work or if you can't find it. I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed. And that's it, my friends, for this week's Growth Minisode. Each week, we're going to focus on something new and dial in a different aspect of physical activity and nutrition. Share with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. Post on your social media stories when you are the CEO of your own health. Post a video of you incorporating hill training into your exercise of or of you eating your superfoods, your shakes, your smoothies shared by the team at the doctor's pharmacy. And make sure you tag me and share your journey. Let me know if you have any other suggestions or tips that will help this Live in the Dream team that I can discuss on future episodes. I will be right here with you working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.